Hello class, here's another practice. Everybody, as you can see, we upload on a daily basis. So make sure to like and subscribe if you like my work. This is American English File, second edition, book three, workbook, part 6A, shot on location. All right, it's pedal to the metal. Everybody, vocabulary, movies. Read the clues and complete the puzzle on the right, this puzzle. And find the hidden kind of movie. For example, number one is done. Look, a movie where images are drawn is an animated movie. Animated. And you see this is part of the keyword. All right. I need you to stop the video and do it yourself. Very good. Now check with your friends. Let's do it together. Number two, a funny movie is a comedy. Number three, a movie based on real events in the past is a historical movie. Number four, a movie with an exciting plot is a thriller. Number five, a scary movie is a horror movie. Number six, a movie about cowboys is a western. Number seven, a movie with a serious story is a drama. Number eight, a funny movie about people falling in love is a romantic comedy. Number nine, a movie about wars and battles is a war movie. Number ten, a movie where the cast sings and dances is a musical. Number eleven, a movie about imaginary events in the future is a science fiction movie now what is the hidden code the hidden kind of movie action movie you did great all the way to part b let's do these ones together for example number one the star of the movie was a famous british actress number two i didn't understand the movie because the plot the story was very complicated number three the actor accepted the part as soon as he read the script. Number four, some members of the audience were crying at the end of the movie. Number five, most critics gave the movie an excellent review. Number six, they only had to shoot the scene once. Number seven, we don't speak French. So we saw the French movie with English subtitles. Number eight, you'll have to wait for the sequel to find out what happens next. Number nine, my favorite soundtrack is the music from the artist. Number 10, the best thing about the movie was the special effects and it looked very realistic. Number 11, the director is looking for X extras to appear in the crowd scenes. And the last one, number 12, the cast was a mixture of American and British actors. Well done. And that's all there is to it for vocabulary. Outstanding. Part 2. Grammar. Passive. I told you about passive tense and passive voice. So we have two types, active and passive. Passive is the objective way of reporting things. You'll know the drill. Let's go. Complete the sentences with the correct passive form of the verbs in the box. Use the tenses in parentheses. For this one, I'm going to help you. Look, the movie is directed by Catherine Bigelow. Simple present. Now, number two, the part of Spider-Man, what should we write? Was played by Andrew Garfield, simple past. Number three, it was very windy while the scene was being shot. Number four, the sequel, future, will. Look, the sequel will be released next year. So it's the type of reporting. You use passive voice in reporting. Some of the extras are going to be invited to the movie premiere. 
all right future going to now number six present continuous look the musical is being shown in movie theaters all over the country number seven present perfect the drama has been dubbed into five other languages and the last one again simple past the script was written by the author of the book great now you remember the basics time to really test you now this is your gig i need you to read this and circle the correct form stop the video take your time no rush do it yourself think it through very good now i need you to check your answers with your friends and now let's check it together Anna Kranina, I'm very bad with names, is a movie that was directed by Joe Wright. Most of the movie was shot in an old theater outside of London, but some scenes were filmed in Russia. It tells the story of a young Russian woman who is married to a government official, but falls in love with an aristocrat. Keira Knightley plays the part of Anna Karenina and the part of her romantic interest, Count Vronsky, is played by Aaron Taylor Johnson. The movie starts when Anna arrives in Moscow. Her brother has been seen with another woman and Anna must speak to her sister-in-law about the situation. It is during this meeting that Anna is introduced to the Count. The movie is based on the novel by Leo Tolstoy. The suburb soundtrack was composed by Italian composer Dario Maranelli, who also wrote the music for Pride and Prejudice and Atonement. Both of his previous soundtracks were nominated for Oscars and the atonement won an Oscar. Very good. You did great. But I'm not surprised. I told you. You're smart because I'm your teacher. Great. You made it so far. Everybody, listen and repeat the sentences. Copy the rhythm. Let's do it. File 6A. Pronunciation A. One. The movie is based on a true story. Two. The scenes will be shot on location. Three. The actor has been nominated for an Oscar. Four. The script was written by the author of the novel. Five. The sequel is going to be released next week. Six. The costumes are being made by hand. Well done. Now you can listen and as many times as you want and practice. Now, everybody, underline the stressed syllable in these words. For example, look, audience. So stress is on A-U. Take your time and do it. Yeah, you can stop the video and do it yourself. Very good. Now I need you to listen and check let's do it together file 6a pronunciation c one audience two historical movie three comedy four director five drama six horror movie 7. Review 8. Sequel 9. Soundtrack 10. Subtitles Very good. You did great. So again, sentence stress and word stress. If you want to speak natural, like an American, like a native speaker, you have to pay attention to the sentence, stress. Awesome work.
And this is part four, reading. Everybody, read the text once and check where you think it comes from. Is it from an online newspaper? Is it from a travel blog? Is it from a website for tourists? Or is it a movie program? Take your time and read it. It's your turn. A few moments later. Okay, you're back. So let me read it myself. On location at Neepworth House. Neepworth House is famous worldwide for the major open air rock concerts that have been held on its grounds since 1979. Neepworth is in the southeast England and the Leeton family have lived there for over 500 years. The house itself is one of the oldest stately homes in the UK. It is also one of the most popular locations for the world's filmmakers. Not surprisingly, the Gothic architecture of the house appealed to American movie uh, director Tim Burton when he saw it. He was in the UK shooting a new version of his movie, Batman, at the time. He thought that the facade of the building would be perfect as the exterior of Wayne Manor, the home of Batman. But the inside of Wayne Manor was actually shot at another big house in the same area, Hatfield House. The inside of Nibworth House has been used in many movies. An important scene from the 2010 Oscar winning movie, The King's Speech, was shot in the ballroom. The movie was made by the British director Tom Hooper. It starred Colin Firth as the young King George the sixth of England, who had a speech impediment. The ballroom was the venue for a party that was held by his older brother, Edward. In a corner of the room, Edward tells George that he is planning to marry the divorced American woman, Wallace Simpson, something that makes it impossible for him to, to be the king of England. It is uh, George who becomes king instead. And of course, like many other historic buildings in the UK, Neatworth has made an appearance in the Harry Potter movies. In the fourth movie of the series, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, a holiday dance is held in Hogwarts School. Before the dancing starts, there is a scene where one of Harry's friends appears in a beautiful long dress. The staircase that she descends while her friends look on the amazement is, in fact, uh, the one in Nipworth House. There are just a few of the famous scenes filmed at Nipworth House. To discover more, why not visit Nipworth yourself? The house is only 27 miles from London and is easy to get by car or by train. Nipworth House is a must for all movie lovers visiting UK. All right, personally, I think it's a website for tourists, because it, talk, it talks about, you know, people visiting. Now, I need you to read the text again and mark the sentences true or false. Again, it's your turn. A few minutes later. All right, now let's answer together. Number one is already done. Neatworth is a famous destination for music lovers. True. Number two, the house isn't occupied anymore. False. Number three, many movies have been made at Neatworth. True. Number four, T Tim Burton used to uh, use the outside of the house in one of his movies. True. Number five, you can see the outside of the house in the King's Speech. False. Actually, it's the inside. Number six, George VI ma uh, makes an important announcement to all his guests at Neatworth. False. Number seven, Harry Potter walks down the staircase in Neatworth uh, in one of the movies. False. Neatworth House is not far from London. It's true. All right, you did great, but we're not done yet. Again, there were some highlighted words like open air, stately homes, new version. All right, I need you to complete the sentences with the highlighted words. For example, my sister didn't really like the new version of Pride and Prejudice. She prefers the old one. Okay, again, I'm going to give you some time. Do it yourself. 
12 seconds later. Now, let's answer them together. Number two, palaces often have a ballroom where people come for a formal dance or party. Number three, nowadays you can visit stately homes in the UK to see how very rich families lived in the past. Number four, in the summer, I love going to open air concerts. It is more fun than going to an indoor concert. Number five, a hotel near a beach is a popular venue for weddings. Number six, a person with a speech impediment can find it very hard to speak in public. And that's all there is to it. And as always, the last set in the house listening everybody first look at the pictures yeah these are some famous locations listen to a tour guide talking to a group before she takes them on the tv and movie walking tour of the central park in new york city all right number the places in the order she mentions them so there are some locations and there is an order. So I need you to number the locations. Let's do it. File 6A. Listening. Hello, and welcome to the TV and movie walking tour of Central Park in New York City. My name's Stacy Clinton, and I'm going to be your guide today. I hope you are all wearing comfortable shoes because the tour lasts for two hours. We'll end at Columbus Circle at around two o'clock. We're going to start at Gapstow Bridge, a stone bridge originally built in 1874. From the bridge you have an amazing view of the Plaza Hotel. Does anyone know which movies the Plaza Hotel has been featured in? Oh, gosh. Oh. No? no idea. Well, you can see this famous hotel in the Great Gatsby and almost famous, just to name two. Oh. So that's where we're going to go first. Then we're going to go to the Woolman Skating Rink, one of two rinks in the park. This skating rink was opened to the public in 1858, well over 150 years ago. You might recognize the rink from the movies Home Alone 2 and Love Story. After the rink, we'll walk to one of the most well-known attractions in Central Park, the Carousel. This carousel has 57 colorful wooden horses for children and adults to ride on, and it's only $3 a ride. The original carousel was built in 1871, this one isn't the original, but it is beautiful. Maybe that's why director Mel Brooks chose to include it in his movie, The Producers. As we walk toward the middle of the park, we'll pass by the Promenade and Bethesda Fountain, where movies such as The Avengers, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and Enchanted shot scenes. Oh, yeah. Farther north, we'll take a look at the largest lake in Central Park, and we'll visit the Boathouse Restaurant, which was featured in the movie When Harry Met Sally. Yeah, yeah. Next, we'll visit the Bow Bridge, a graceful cast iron bridge, which is considered one of the most romantic spots in New York City. Movie directors must agree, because the bridge has been featured in Spider-Man 3, on the TV show Glee, and in one of the greatest love stories of all time, the way we were. At this point, we'll visit Strawberry Fields, an area of the park dedicated to John Lennon and his music. Yeah. We'll look at the beautiful memorial mosaic with the word Imagine in the middle, designed to honor Lennon's memory. Of course, this area of the park was also used for a scene in the movie Little Manhattan. Interesting. Yeah. Finally, we'll walk to the Sheep Meadow. Don't worry, there haven't been any sheep in this meadow since 1934. However, we will see people sunbathing or relaxing in this 15-acre open area. This location was used in scenes for Wall Street and the Fisher King. Oh, yeah, yeah. As we walk to our final destination, 
Columbus Circle, we'll pass by Tavern on the Green, once a famous restaurant in New York City, and also used as a location for the popular movie Ghostbusters. Aww. And finally, we'll end up at Columbus Circle, where scenes for Taxi Driver and Borat were shot. Okay, so let's get going and head to our first stop, Gapstow Bridge. Ah, 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 ah. What type of tourists are these? All right, very good. Check your answers with your friends. All right, so these are the answers. That's the order. Now, we're not done yet. I need you to listen again and correct any mistakes in the sentences and check if the sentences are correct for example the tour will last for three hours no two hours all right again this is your gig let's listen file 6a listening hello and welcome to the tv and movie walking tour of central park in new york city my name's Stacy Clinton, and I'm going to be your guide today. I hope you are all wearing comfortable shoes, because the tour lasts for two hours. We'll end at Columbus Circle at around two o'clock. We're going to start at Gapstow Bridge, a stone bridge originally built in 1874. From the bridge, you have an amazing view of the Plaza Hotel, does anyone know which movies the Plaza Hotel has been featured in? Oh, gosh. No? Well, you can see this famous hotel in The Great Gatsby and almost famous, just to name two. Oh. So that's where we're going to go first. Then we're going to go to the Woolman Skating Rink, one of two rinks in the park. This skating rink was opened to the public in 1858 well over 150 years ago. You might recognize the rink from the movies Home Alone 2 and Love Story. After the rink, we'll walk to one of the most well-known attractions in Central Park, the carousel. This carousel has 57 colorful wooden horses for children and adults to ride on, and it's only $3 a ride. The original carousel was built in 1871. This one isn't the original, but it is beautiful. Maybe that's why director Mel Brooks chose to include it in his movie, The Producers. As we walk toward the middle of the park, we'll pass by the Promenade and Bethesda Fountain, where movies such as The Avengers, Breakfast at Tiffany's, and Enchanted shot scenes. Oh, yeah. Farther north, we'll take a look at the largest lake in Central Park, and we'll visit the Boathouse Restaurant, which was featured in the movie When Harry Met Sally. Yeah. Next, we'll visit the Bow Bridge, a graceful cast iron bridge, which is considered one of the most romantic spots in New York City. Movie directors must agree, because the bridge has been featured in Spider-Man 3, on the TV show Glee, and in one of the greatest love stories of all time, The Way We Were. At this point, we'll visit Strawberry Fields, an area of the park dedicated to John Lennon and his music. Wow. We'll look at the beautiful memorial mosaic with the word Imagine in the middle, designed to honor Lennon's memory. Of course, this area of the park was also used for a scene in the movie Little Manhattan. Interesting. Yeah. Finally, we'll walk to the sheep meadow. Don't worry, there haven't been any sheep in this meadow since 1934. However, we will see people sunbathing or relaxing in this 15-acre open area. This location was used in scenes for Wall Street and the Fisher King. Oh, yeah, yeah. As we walk to our final destination, Columbus Circle, we'll pass by Tavern on the Green, once a famous restaurant in New York City, and also used as a location for the popular movie Ghostbusters. Oh, yeah. And finally, we'll end up at Columbus Circle, where scenes for Taxi Driver and Borat were shot. Okay, so let's get going and head to our first stop, 
Gapstow Bridge. <laughs> All right, check your answers with your friends. The Gapstow Bridge is made of wood. It's made of stone. Number three, the Plaza Hotel was featured in The Great Gatsby. It's true. It's okay. Number four, there is one skating rink in Central Park. No, there are two. Number five, the carousel has 47 wooden horses to ride on. Actually, 57. Number six, the Boathouse Restaurant is next to the smallest lake in Central Park. Largest. Number seven, the Bow Bridge was used as a location in on the TV show Glee. It's true. And all the way to number eight, the last time sheep were in the sheep meadow was 1943. No, it was 1934. And in the end, I have some words that are useful for you. Alley, alley, aristocratic, aristocratic, gangsters, gangsters, servants, servants, tomb, tomb. B is silent, yeah? B is silent. Tomb. Fictional. Fictional. Spectacular. Spectacular. Currently. Currently. On the edge. On the edge of. All right? And I need you to write sentences for each of these words and phrases. And another practice done. You see, this is every day's work. Practice on a daily basis. And as always, if I help you, if I make your English better, make sure to like and subscribe. Wish you all the best, my friends. Remember, you can make a difference. I believe in you. But do you believe in yourself? That's all there is to it for today. Bye-bye.